Sech as Babakama Daf Pei Beis takes us near the end of the lengthy Perak Marubas, the last full Daf in the Perak. And it continues, the Agarata, it continues bringing lists of ten things. We've already seen the ten Takunas of Yeshua, now we get to the ten Takunas of Ezra, and the ten things that it says about Yerushalayim. And of course, the Gemara will explain them, and then in the end, we'll get back to our previous mission. So the Gemara begins with the ten Takunas that were made by Ezra. So we'll read the list first, and then we'll explain them. So the ten things are that we lane on Mincha by Shabbos, that we lane on Monday on Thursday, that the courts, but they didn't meet on Monday and on Thursday, that we wash, we do laundry on Thursdays of the week, that you eat garlic on a Friday, Arab Shabbos, that a woman, if she needs to make bread, should wake up early in the morning to bake the bread, that she should wear a special... Uh, clothing, which the Gemara seems to describe as an undergarment that resembles small trousers, that she wears that under the dress, and that she should do a chafifa, that she should comb through her hair and rub through them to make sure that they're clean before going to the mikvah. Also, that peddlers should travel from city to city to sell perfume, and the people can't block them. And he was also metake in that a bal keri, somebody who sees keri, should go to the mikvah. The Gemara will explain all of these and the reasons for them, and some questions on them. So first of all, that we lay in a mincha and Shabbos, the Gemara says that's for the people who can't make it to shul on Monday and Thursday, because they're busy in their stores, so that they should be able to hear the kriya at least on an extra time. Second, the ta'akana was that we lay in on on Monday and on Thursday of the week. So the Gemara says, isn't that an original Takana from before the time of Ezra? Like it says, They traveled three days in the desert and didn't find water. So the Gemara quotes those who say, and says, when they said that they didn't find water, it doesn't mean water, it means Taira. Like it says, all thirsty should go to the water, meaning all those who want to learn should go to learn Taira. So they went three days without Tyra, once that happened, they became weary. So the Nevi'im stood up and said that he should make sure that there is not three full days without any Kriya, and therefore we lay in on Monday and on Thursday, so the most you have is between Monday and, and of course, on Shabbos, so that the most you have is between Monday and Thursday, where there are two full days, but not longer. Now, so this is uh, the kind of preceding Ezra. So the Gemara says, no, Ezra lengthened it a bit. The original Takana was either that they should lay in three psukim for one kairi, or that they should have three psukim for three kairim. But as I said, you need to have a minimum of ten psukim for three kruim, kairi and levi Yisrael were the original three, but the ten is for the ten people that are supposed to be learning full-time in every town. Next halacha was that the courts meet on Monday and Thursday, the more says because the, the Tamir Chachamim were in town to lane. Next is that they should do laundry on a Thursday, that's the Kavit Shabbos. That they should eat shum, the garlic, on Arab Shabbos. That's because of the mitzvah of Sa'ino, the mitzvah of a man to remember his wife. Physically is on Friday night, primarily, especially for Tamil Chachamim. And therefore, he should eat the garlic during the day because it's marba zera. It increases seed. And the source for that is that it says, Ashapiria yitain bi'itai, the fruit should be given in the proper time. It says, Rabbi Huda, Pastor of Nachman, Pastor of Kahana, and Pastor of Yechanan. That refers to somebody who is Mashama Shmitasai who has conjugal relations on every Erev Shabbos when Mutter. Now the Gemara quotes the Bible, it says there are five things, five qualities that it says about Shum, about the garlic. It makes a person full, it makes a person warm, it makes a person's face shine, it's Mara Bezerra, and it destroys um, kinim of the intestines, some type of parasite that lives on the insides. And some say another thing is that it introduces love because it makes people happy, and that it removes jealousy. Okay, back to the Takanas of Ezra, that a woman should wake up early in the morning to bake the bread, and that's that there should be bread already for the Aniyim, for the poor people when they need it. Next is that she should wear the under sinar, that's because of Tzniyas, the Gemara says. Next is that she should do Chafifa, she should comb through her hair before Tefillah, the Gemara says, that's a Daraisa, Daraisa has to remove every Chatzitza, like it says, you have to wash one's skin in the water, there shouldn't be anything blocking between the skin and the water. Um, and then also to include a satuffel, the that which is tuffle to skin, which means hair. So what is Ezra adding, if that's already mentioned with the rice out? So the more explains, the rice, it's enough to just look at it and make sure that it's clean and make sure that there are no knots in the hair and that it's actually clean from any dirt interceding. 
But as it was metake and you have to actually comb through the hair and clean it, it's not enough to just look. Next item on the list of the Tekonas of Ezra Sefer was that peddlers are allowed to circulate amongst the cities and no one can stop them. That's because they sold jewelry and perfume for the women, which was important so that they should be able to be beloved by their husbands. <clears throat> and then the last one is that a Baal Keri has to do Tvilo. Someone asks that is there ice? It says, After any Zerah, he has to go to the mikvah. So the Gemara says, no, the Deiraisa is before eating truma. Ezra Stakana was before any Dvarm Shabakdusha, before learning or Tefillah, um, before Tefillah. <coughs> tefillah before Tevila. Now the Gemara starts another list of ten things, ten halachas that were said about Yerushalayim. So we'll list the ten and then the Gemara comments on them. So number one, that a home sold in Yerushalayim is not permanently sold. It can be redeemed at any point, and it goes back by Yehovah, just as the Torah says, Allah for the Bate Ari Chayma, houses which are part of the wall of any other city. Second Allah is that Yerushalayim can never be obligated to bring an Egla Rufa. Third, that it can never be an Irani Dachas, a city which is Roi Vavide Azara, that has to be destroyed. It can also never have Tomas Nigayim on its walls. You will never find beams that stick out of the homes, whether it's beams out of the walls or beams to hold up a porch. Additionally, you can't have a trash heap in Yerushalayim. You shouldn't have any part of it set aside for a dump. You also shouldn't have any urns, any kilns that are used for firing clay. Next, halacha that it says that it should not have any gardens or orchards except for one that was called the Rose Garden, which was from where they drew certain spices for the Ketiris, and that garden existed from the days of the Nevi'im Rishonim. Next, halacha is the Anala, to raise chickens in Yerushalayim. And the last is that you cannot keep a mace there overnight. The Gemara now gives the reasons for these. So the first few are based on the opinion that Yerushalayim was not divided up amongst any Shvatim. We have a division of Yerushalayim between Yehuda and Binyamin, but this Shita held that it did not belong to anyone. And this Satana holds that a number of these lachas you can learn through Adrasha apply only to land which belongs to certain Shvatim. So first of all, the halacha that it cannot be permanently purchased, that's because the Torah says, that the home which is in a walled city can be purchased permanently, besides for Yerushalayim, that it's, it belongs to the one for his generations, that's only if it belongs to certain shvatim, but Yerushalayim doesn't belong to any shvatim. Next law, he can't bring an Egla Rufo, because it says, The land that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives to you to inherit, that only refers to land that you inherit, not Yerushalayim, which was not given to any Shvatim. It can't be any Dachas, because it says, Orecho, your city, but Yerushalayim is not your city, because it wasn't given to any Shevet. can't be Matama by Negayim, because it says, A house in the land of your inheritance. Again, you didn't inherit Yerushalayim, it wasn't given to the Shvatim. Now, you don't have beams that stick out, that's because they can make an oil, they make a roof over Tuma and you, and because it shouldn't cause injury to the oily regalim. People come from outside and it gets crowded. You shouldn't have a uh, trash dump there, that's because there are rodents tend to live in them, and the rodents die there and they're metame, and they'll be metame, the kachim that are in Yerushalayim. You shouldn't have a kiln in Yerushalayim because that makes smoke, which blackens the walls, and it's not pretty for Yerushalayim. You shouldn't have gardens and orchards there because they smell. People tend to uh, put fertilizer in them and uh, weeds, and they smell. You shouldn't have chickens because they peck in the trash and they take the bones of the rodents that are matame, and they will be matame the kachim that are in Yerushalayim. And should not allow the dead to spend the night there. Make sure that you bury the same day. That is a Messiah, which we have. And the Gemara says there is no reason that is given for that. Okay, that concludes this discussion. The Gemara now refers back to our Mishnah. We would see in Allah that you know that raise a Chazir, a pig, in anywhere, in any um, place. So the Gemara gives the background to this, which was an incident that happened. The descendants of the Chashmanayim eventually ended up in a war with each other. 
There were two brothers, Horkinus and Aristobulus, who were fighting over the kingship, who was going to be the king, and one and his supporters holed up inside the base of Migdash, the other one laid siege outside the base of Migdash, but they had to keep the Avoida going, so the ones that went inside would lower a box of coins from the Lishka, which held the coins for the carbon Tumid. He, They would lower it outside the base of Migdash to those on the outside, and those on the outside would send in a sheep, so they could bring the carbon Tumid. There was an old man there who knew Greek wisdom, and he said to those on the outside, as long as they keep doing the Aveda, you're never going to conquer them. And so the next day, when they sent down the coins, instead of sending up a sheep, they sent up a pig. When the pig was being dragged up the wall, he dug his nails into the wall, and that caused Eretz Yisrael to tremble 400 amas by 400 amas, referring to the entire sphere of Kedusha. And at that time, they said, Cursed is anyone who raises p- pigs. And they also said, Cursed is anyone who teaches his son the Greek wisdoms. At that time, we learned that the Korban Omer, the barley which was brought from close to Yerushalayim, from the fields near Yerushalayim, can no longer be brought there because they were destroyed. It had to be brought from the gardens of Tzrifin. And the Shtei which was also brought from close, was now no longer able to be brought. It had to be brought from the valley of Ein Socher.